Warning, this video contains spoilers that reveal critical parts of the game's storyline. If you don't want to see these, stop watching now. If you like this video, please consider making a donation to the American Cancer Society. I've included a link to our fundraising team in the description field of this video. A little in abundance is a lot, so any amount would be greatly appreciated. Hello again my friends, Eric Pearson here, and I'd like to share with you a demo for an upcoming game called Interference. Set in the 1980s, you play as a security guard on the night shift at a secret research facility. This game is reminiscent of the older Five Nights at Freddy's, but thankfully doesn't have any horrifying jump scares. So grab a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and let's play. Some of the language in this demo is a little salty, so consider yourself warned. Guess you close up shop early. I suppose you need all the time you can get to pack the one toothbrush and three pairs of socks you've been able to fit in your cabin out there in Nowheresville, Alaska. <laughs> wow, I can't believe we're gonna be town mates again. Workmates, movie night mates. I don't know what to say, you know? I'm stoked. I'll admit it, and you should be too. It is beautiful out here in, um, well, Nowheresville, Arizona. <laughs> Seriously, though, there is a sense of infinite possibility in the landscape. Some serious inspiration for your script, right? Call me corny, but you'll see what I mean when you get here. Anyway, let me know what I can do to smooth out your arrival, okay? HR was still a bit concerned that you've never worked a security booth before, but I squared everything away, and you're set to start in the new year as planned. At the very least, I trust you to keep us safe. <laughs> All right, I'll shut up now. Last night's experiment was an all-nighter, so I should, uh, I should probably get some sleep. <sighs> Love you. See you soon. Are you serious? You've been with the Barclay Institute for, what, three months and that's it? See you later? What were you planning on telling me? So now we have to decide how to respond to this. And it's implied that it looks like you, the main character, are looking to quit this job. I try to be nice about these things, so I'm going to say, I'm sorry, I didn't know when I should tell you. Any time would have been better than right now. <sighs> Alright, cool. So, now on top of the critical experiment we're about to conduct, I have to worry about you abandoning ship. And thanks for breaking the news from all the way out there in your cozy guard booth while we're at work, instead of telling me to my face. So, there's a lot that I can say. I can say this. I know this isn't ideal, but it's my life. I get to decide when I move. Or I can say once again, I really am sorry. Let's try that. So now what? What's next with that Swiss cheese resume of yours? Barclay wouldn't have even looked at it if I hadn't pulled some strings to get you here. Hmm. Okay. Oh, she has a point about the job hopping. So, I'll try and be nice again. And I appreciate what you did, but I still think this is the best for me. Burning another bridge with yet another employer is not what's best. What are you gonna do? Go back to New York? The days of crashing on our friends' couches are over. I mean, Ben just had a kid, for God's sake. And who's gonna put in a good word for you? The boss here sure as hell won't, or the last three employers you abandoned. Hmm. Yeah, job hopping's not a good look. So... I can say, I guess, appreciate the support, by the way. Are you... Agreeing with me, or is the sarcasm a way to avoid talking about this more? Well, 
I'm going to continue the niceness and say, I don't know, can I just think about this a little more? Yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's all I ask. I have to get back to work. We'll talk soon. Okay, so we have time to explore the surroundings. We've got some security monitors. We have an old computer, telephone fan, and an old boombox. And a logo. Looks like we got a snake outside. I think I'm going to turn off the radio, though. First aid kit, we've got a pin board with a map of the facility. We have a memo talking about power fluctuations and assuring people that nobody needs to be worried about it. We have another memo over here that tells people that there's a marked increase in personnel falling ill correlating with recent power disturbances and that this electrical sickness can be easily treated, so therefore no need to worry. And then over here we've got a water cooler, coffee pot, microwave, got a pair of binoculars here. And we've got the lonely road here. We also have a, what was that? Hmm, nothing. We have some kind of a cabinet here. Uh, hello. Okay, that's not good. Is that smoke? Let's look at hey, these binoculars. Please answer me. Oh, God. Please. Okay. We've got smoke rising in the distance. That is not a good sign. Okay, let's put these down. And talk to Valerie. So I'm going to say... Well, yes, except there was an explosion out here. Thank God you're there. Those... Wait. There was an explosion? Are you okay? I'm going to say... I'm fine. Are you? Good. Good. I'm okay, but things aren't looking so good over here in the lab. Those uh, Unseen Order people, the, um, you know, that cult that's always bothering us, they... Those goddamn pests! More like it! Dr. Lipton, please. Yeah, those somehow got into the facility and are trying to break into the central lab. Like, this goes way beyond the picketing and protests. The blast doors are engaged, but they're armed to the teeth. It's only a matter of time before they get to us. We could override the security protocols on one of the other doors, but those cultists cut power to the backup generators and were trapped inside the lab. If we could just... Wait a minute. You have that power reroute software on your computer, right? I think... Hold on. William, would that work? I reckon it would. Do we have a choice? Dr. Dr. Lipton. Lipton! Check your computer. If I'm remembering correctly, you can see the central lab, uh, Sector 5, is offline. Just follow the prompts to authorize a power reroute, and it should take care of the rest. Hopefully that'll be enough to get these doors open. And tell your friend to hurry! I mean, no rush. <laughs> okay, so it says press spacebar to request the reroute authorization code. Oh, there's a telephone. Welcome to the Barclay Institute please, Automated Phone please, Authorization. We gotta get these doors open. Your authorization Come on, I code need you to do this. Boost B power reroute is five. One. Five. Nine. Okay. If you did not request this authorization. What's going on? Your computer's working, right? The doors are online! No, no, no. We got it! Oh, thank you. I'll radio when I'm safe. I might need your help getting out of the facility. I got a feeling we're just getting started. And so it begins. And I agree, this story is off to a very good start. I'm, I'm fairly intrigued by this. So I'm looking forward to when the full game comes out sometime next year. So... I encourage you to uh, check out the demo of this. There's more that you can explore in the room, but I may save that for a future video. So, thank you very much for watching, and join me next time. Eric Pearson, signing off.